To work with Amazon, you really need the command line interface, which allows you to execute commands on your terminal, or if you're in Visual Studio Code from your little bash terminal in there, whether you're on Windows or Mac or Linux, doesn't matter. It's integral to have that to debug basic things, to test basic things, and there's some amazing functionality in Shell that you just don't get using the API. So in order for us to do infrastructure as code and set up our lambdas and microservices and all of our other infrastructure in an automated fashion, you really need Shell as your base to catch your back, to help debug things. So we're gonna start from scratch. I already assume if you're on Mac, you have Brew. If you're on PC, you're probably gonna use some pre-compiled binary to install Python. On PC, a lot of them don't actually come with Python. On Mac, it's the actual opposite. We type in Python here it actually comes with the OS and is built into it. So when you type the word Python or Ruby, those kind of things are there. The bad news is, is that Python is required by the OS to run. So what we're gonna do is assume you already have brew. Brew install Python, and it'll go on the internet and find Python for you. In my case, I've already installed it. So if I go, which Python, you wanna see something that's in your user directory. On Mac, I believe you type in which Python before you do any of this, it defaults to the OS standard install. And the downside to that is you don't have permissions on it. If you're on a work computer where they limit your admin privileges, you even have less access to it. They don't want you messing with that really because you could break the OS, so it's bad, obviously. So we're gonna get our own Python that we can play with, with permissions, and it's okay if it messes up. Secondly, we're gonna have more power. We're gonna have more permissions to create and install things for it. So now that we have our Python, we're gonna install another thing called pip install virtual environment or virtual env. Virtual environment works very similar to Node, where Node, if you install libraries from the internet, it installs it locally in the folder or directory you're at. So that way you can have multiple projects on your machine, all using different libraries, versions of the libraries, and installing a library into one project doesn't magically break another. Python is the complete opposite. When you install a package in Python by default, it installs it globally. Now there are package managers such as virtual environment, which throws everything into a folder that you say, or a conda or anaconda. So we're gonna use virtual environment just because it's pretty simple. And we're not doing any fancy data science stuff. We're just using Python to allow us to do the Amazon CLI. Now that we have virtual environment, we're gonna go to our root directory here, CD tilde. And if you look, I've already got a couple here, virtual environment, and these are my environment folders. These are where all your Python libraries are stored. Shell runs on top of Python, that's kind of why we're all doing this. The way you install a directory for Python to safely install and just to that folder, rather than globally all over the place, is make a directory. Now normally you would say make dir to make a directory, but we're gonna use virtual environment to do it. So you say virtual environment, We'll say my in five. And what this will do is install all the basic requirements of Python needed to install packages and run from itself in that particular directory. So this folder, my invin5, is gonna have everything you need for the Amazon CLI and all the libraries, etc. You can move this to your project folder so each one is kept safe. That's great. For now, I'm just gonna keep it on root. To activate it, you go source my in five slash bin slash activate. Once you see this nice little my in five, you'll know that it's working. That lets you know that you're actually inside your Python environment. Now I'm gonna get out of this one and go back to my in, which is my main one, but this is basically all you need to do. So when we pip install libraries now, very similar to npm install for node, it'll install in that folder. If something messes up or we're going to another project, we can actually put these folders directly into projects. Given the fact that I do Amazon CLI all over the place, I'm just gonna keep it here global for now in my root directory. We're gonna install one more piece of software and that is AWS CLI. When you install AWS CLI, it gives you all the libraries for Python that you need to run command line interface for Python. It's wunderbar. However, you have to log in. So we're gonna say AWS configure and we only have to do this once, good news. It's looking for my access key. That is my username and password for Amazon. This is different than your account. So my email and password are not gonna work for this. This is a specific user that has a specific set of permissions. To see what users you have, create new users, go to your Amazon console, whatever your region is. If you don't find it in this gigantic list, type in IAM and you'll see all your users on the left here. Click users, Jester Excel and he has a certain amount of roles that he can do, but I have no access keys. When you create these, you only have a limited amount. So when I create access key, you can only see your secret access key one time. So we're gonna take this key here, copy to the clipboard, and I'm gonna paste that in. And now it's looking for the secret key. You can only show this once. Once you do that, it goes away. And I'm gonna paste that in there. 
hit enter. Default is East. Amazon is deployed all over the world. If you're Virginia like me, you're going to use US East. If you're all over the world, you want to use whatever's local to you. The default output is hit enter. You don't really care about is specifically lambdas. So I'm going to say AWS lambda list dash functions. Show me all the functions I have on my account. You can see there's billions of them because I created a ton. That's a great way to use the AWS CLI. We're gonna use him a lot, some of which we're gonna do in JavaScript, some of which we're gonna just do in shell to play around the bug. Used to automate a lot of our Lambda and microservice infrastructure. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you install Python on your Mac. If you're on a PC, just use one of those binaries. We've configured Python using virtual environment so we can have our libraries installed in a folder rather than global. And we have our own custom Python. So now we've got two steps removed from the OS's Python. On PC, you just got a nice little instance there for you in a secured place. Lastly, we've installed the Amazon CLI or command line interface for AWS, which allows us to run these commands in terminal to query our infrastructure, to change our infrastructure, to help automate some of this stuff. Some of this is great in JavaScript, but some of it's a lot simpler to do in shell and a lot easier to debug. So it's an indispensable tool set, gets you out of your comfort zone if you're strictly just a programmer, and be aware, I'm an art student and I can figure it out, which means you can too.